Okay, welcome to Hybrid Cars. This is kind of an introduction, just kind of wet your whistle. Obviously, maybe not obviously, but it says on the thing, Mark Larson. I'm not Mark Larson. Thank God. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> He'll like that part. Too. <laughs> My name's Tim McFerrin. I've um, been a trainer here for about a year and a half, and I've been doing this for a long time. I won't admit how long. But I've been ASE master since 1981, so that's the only hints I'm given. <laughs> Okay, here's what we'll talk about real quick. We don't have a lot of time, so we're going to talk about the makes and models, uh, the concepts and configurations, how they put these things together, because everybody's got a better idea somewhere. Safety. If you guys, have you guys had much in the way of any hybrid cars coming in your shops? Starting to see them for oil changes and you know, simple things, mm -hmm. but not for any real. Not for yeah. yeah. That, that's kind of what I. I, mean, I haven't even seen one for brakes or, or anything. Mm -hmm. like that, yeah. That. You will. I want, to, I want to learn a little more about them so that uh, we can put it on our yeah. website that we do work on exactly. coverage. Yeah, because if you get the other guys, our competition saying we don't want to work on that, and we put and our hands in, we yeah, will work on it. You don't want to send them. Yeah. I hate sending anything to the Exactly. Guys, period. Yeah, we want to make a friend out of people. There's one thing I've got to have mm -hmm. a computer flash or something, and mm -hmm. I can't do it. All right, well, i got no yep. choice. Exactly. But yep. for, for basic maintenance, there's no reason we should ever talk to Oh, people. no, there's all kinds of things we can do on there. A little handout to give you guys. There's all kinds of things we can do on there. Uh, I've still got a couple techs that, you know, afraid to take an airbag out of a car. So, I mean, they've been around since 1990. So, you know, with the proper procedures and precautions, there's nothing really to worry about. Yeah, it's dangerous. Any car is dangerous. You just have to use proper procedures. You've been working in that field forever. Exactly. <laughs> And there's some there's some interesting technology and acronyms out there that they can't make up their mind up. I like this one. Actually, in, in Cincinnati, there was a case one night where the police chased a guy out 275 that was in a hybrid car and put the stop sticks out. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, the technology, the, the Prius, if I remember right, the Prius would go to about 106 miles an hour before the computer would you know stop it. And you get there fairly quick. I mean, it's not like they're underpowered by any oh, means, oh, it's but it is the typical yeah. joke. <laughs> That's for sure. So you recognize these guys? Yeah. Port Escape. There's a Prius. Saturn View. Don't see a whole lot of those out there. And I didn't recognize that guy at first. Or it's a Honda Insight. Fusion. That's an Insight. This is a new first. It's just better looking. Though. Yeah. I was used to the old one with the fender skirts, that little first generation oh, yeah, one. That was the old, the hideous car. Now, you know what the, you know what the, what the load carrying capacity, including the driver, was on the first generation? We could uh, inside? Exactly. It was 395 pounds. That was it. I mean, that's a driver, a kid, and a set of golf clubs. That's it. And, you know, they had the low roller resistance tires, very light car, all aluminum, semis that blow them off the road. So I was kind of surprised that they still called this one an Insight. I thought they should have given it a new name. That's, that's stuff we're seeing out there. Now, how about this? Yep. Seeing these guys out there yet? They're out there. I haven't seen the Volt yet. Mm -hmm. There's, there's uh, Mark says Tesla, he sees a Tesla. Tesla. He says there's one that lives out near him that he sees a lot of times in passive. The Nissan Leaf, it's around, and there's some cities doing experiments with these hydrogen filling stations. So this is our future, and we're going to be seeing more and more of these cars, so we need to embrace it, that's for sure. Now, what is HEV? Right now, it stands for Hybrid Electric Vehicle. Who knows? In the future, it could be a hydrogen electric vehicle. You know, what combination? Propane, alcohol, biodiesel, who knows? So for now, we're saying that it has some kind of an internal combustion engine. And so they've coined you know, the term ice. But it's going to be something that burns. <laughs> and then electric motor. And we run those guys together. Something to charge them up, something to run them. <laughs> what am I back to do? He's getting closer to it. advantages. The ice, the internal combustion engine, is generally more efficient by means of valve time. You hear it all the time, the Atkinson cycle engine. Well, we'll talk a little bit more about that, what actually that means. But that's what they use in a lot of these. Electric motors are much more efficient than internal combustion engines. You know, with a gasoline engine, it's been this way forever. We really can't make it any better. But we get 35% power. The other 65% is heat going out the tailpipe, going in the radiator. Electric motors, 95% efficient. So that's for every... a bit of, bit of a over there. 
Yeah. On which? On the fact that electric is that much more efficient than a... Uh, well, it really is. Yeah, if they were both in an, an optimum setting. Oh, exactly. Because you mean, of the fact that an electric motor has to be run by an internal yeah. combustion engine. Yeah, I mean, depend, really like the bolt. Exactly. Yeah. But, I mean, the actual electric motor itself, itself. considering what you put into it, very big. Right. And it makes tremendous amount of torque at extremely yeah. low RPM. I mean, technically, you know, theoretically in electronics class, at zero RPM it has infinite torque and infinite current capability at zero RPM. That's not the way it works in the real world, but at low RPM they work now. Our gas engines don't make good power at low RPM, do they? They got to get going, get some inertia, and then build up a torque. So by putting the two together, we get a big advantage. By using an electric engine too, we have a, we don't need as big of a gas engine in the car, internal combustion. It can be much smaller. The inside was like a one liter engine in its original configuration, so we don't need as big an engine. Smaller the engine, the less gas it's going to burn. Now here is we found this and pulled this off. This is what's being sold right now. Far and away, the Prius is the biggest seller right now. Some Camrys, some Civics. Has anybody ever had a Saturn Aura hybrid in their shop? One one hundredth of one percent. <laughs> Not many of them out there. But there's also too. There's BMW, Mercedes. They're all making hybrids. So percentage-wise, it's growing quite quickly. And I think this was taken as of the end of 2010. I think is what it said on the little thing we pulled it off of. So I mean, it's growing all the time. So there's two basic kinds of hybrid that we're dealing with right now. A mild hybrid uses the stop-start technology during coasting, stopping. Uh, the gas engine is off during braking and idle. We're using lower voltage, basically, you know, just three batteries, you know, coming up with 36 volts. 10 to 15 percent improvement. I've also seen 8 to 12. It depends on how it's driven, but it has some more improvement. I have seen a couple articles saying that the government's going to mandate this technology on every car sold around 2017, something like that. They want every car that we sell to be shut off when it's stopped and shut off during coasting because that way it'll boost the overall CAFE standard, you know, we've got our miles, that kind of stuff. But some of the eco miles of the gas engines are already running. Yeah, I mean, BMW had shutting off the fuel injectors back in the mid-80s to save gas, but you know, the, the, the start part to completely shut off the engine requires a new technology that we're starting to use now. So we'll see more of those. Then in the strong hybrid, two mode, whatever you want to call it, there's all kinds of different names. Electric only drive mode, uh, a low speed, at slow speeds electric motor, the gas engine are both, depending on what the computer decides to run it. At cruising speeds, we may be running on the electric motor while the gas engine is charging. And then we start going up the hill and we need a gas engine boost, it'll quit charging and direct more of that into the drivetrain so we can make all kinds of decisions. Deceleration fuel cut, regenerative braking. You ever driven a, a Prius? Those regenerative brakes will throw you through the windshield. I was so shocked the first time I drove one. I mean, they work great. And they're saying up to a 25% improvement in fuel economy. And, and remember when those cars first came out, they had these huge gas mileage numbers, and then they kind of brought them back down to the real world because it didn't do quite what they claimed at the beginning. But still, it is amazing how much better they get. Now this is a Saturn view. It's using internal combustion engine for constant power for moving the vehicle. And then the electric drive motor acts to assist the engine when you need the extra power. A lot like the Insight was. Gas engine, the electric motor gave it the boost. The electric drive motor, now here's kind of the key to the mild hybrid. The electric drive motor is incapable of propelling the vehicle by itself. It can't do it. Now this particular one, if you look, it's one of the alternators on steroids. It's an integrated starter alternator. So this alternator, besides charging the battery pack, we flip the current the other way, this alternator can spin the belt to help aid power to the engine. So it has two jobs to it. Now this is the pickup truck mild hybrid. And it's still the same thing, it incorporates idle stop. Engine runs now. The key there is stops running when specified conditions are met. There are certain things that it won't shut off the engine. If you're on max AC and it's a belt driven compressor, it'll keep the gas engine run. So it depends on conditions. Under most conditions, the ICE has started using the integrated starter alternator. Some of them call it BAS for belted alternator starter. Or in this case, integrated starter generator. They put it in the bell housing in the transmission. That's where the generator is. They can aid this. Because this is a truck which is a real rear wheel drive, so the transmission's big enough to stick that in the bell housing. We don't have to worry about room like you do a lot of front wheel drive cars. 
And the key to those alternator generator starting systems is the fact of how fast they spin the engine. A thousand RPM compared to about 200 when you're using a regular conventional cranky motor. So since it spins the engine so fast, you don't get that bump. It's a nice smooth takeoff. On the Prius, when I drove it, as the gas engine kicked in, it was just a little bump. And most people probably would never feel it. I mean, since I drive cars all the time, I notice that most people don't even notice it. So it's much smoother than, than a cranky motor that we use. This is a, that same truck, the Silverado, parallel hybrid truck. Uh, it only uses 36 volts, so basically three batteries and 42 volt charging because of course cars run at 14 volts and will run at 12, so we're going to charge it at 14, so it works out to 42. Idle stop capable, uses electric power steering. Uh, torque smoothing is kind of new. What they do with that is they use that electric motor in the bell housing to help smooth out the torque impulses from the gas engine, so it makes for smoother acceleration. Regenerative braking, of course. But the key again, since it's a mild, is that the electric motor can't move the truck by itself. It's got to have the gas engine to actually physically move. In a parallel system, you're hearing, you can hear this parallel series. There is one vehicle right now that's a series only setup, and that's the Volt. Its gas engine isn't connected to the transmission, is it? Only thing the gas engine does is charge the batteries. So we didn't put that into this because there's so few of those right now, but that's considered just a series setup because the gas engine doesn't attach to the transmission. In a parallel system, the internal combustion engine and the electric motor drive the transmission. Honda's integrated motor systems, the insight. That's the way it started out because it had the gas engine and the electric motor gave it the extra power it needed. So then you move into a strong hybrid and you know, what we traditionally think of. A vehicle that can be prepared, be propelled either by the internal combustion engine or an electric motor. Strong hybrids can propel the vehicle solely by electric power, and then it'll start the other engine if it needs some assistance, depending on how hard you step down. Uh, the new Generation 3 Prius has a button that you can go into electric only mode to make sure it doesn't start the gas engine for a limited amount of time. It doesn't go very far. So seeing how they call it parallel, here's your gas engine feeding into there, the electric motor feeding in, this is the generator feeding in, and then we go to the transaxle. So they're working together in a parallel path. Now this is the uh, Cadillac Escalade, the Yukon, the Tahoe. It has two motors, input electric motor, output electric motor. Both of those are 50, kilo, uh, yeah, 50 kilowatt motors. Uh, they can't really run the, well, they can run the vehicle on its own for a limited amount of time. They said, if, if the way the article reads is if you're very judicious with the pedal, real gentle, that you can move up to 35 miles an hour for two miles before the gas engine would kick in and have to help. So that's not very far. That's not really an electric driving mode, but it can be done. Most cases, the computer uses, here's a transmission computer, it balances these two electric motors and the gas engine here to get the greatest efficiency. Because gas engines are better efficient at a certain RPM, the electric motors are better, so they balance each other constantly to get the best feel out of that. Full strong hybrid, example include the Toyo Lexus hybrids. Now we have the high voltage system. 300 to 650 volts. And voltage is bad enough, but amperage is what kills you, isn't it? And these things can have as much as a thousand amps available at any given time, which will vaporize copper. So this isn't something that you want to treat lightly. You always want to be careful with these guys. They can power the vehicle using an electric motor alone from a stop. They, of course, use a regenerative braking and the idle stop as well as electric power steering. And at the beginning, the Prius had to use a belt-driven AC compressor, now it uses a full electric compressor. So since we've got all this electricity available, we're going to use it for steering, we're going to use it for air conditioning, we're going to use it for a lot of things. The, uh, speaking of strong, the, the uh, Lexus that I showed you in just a, a couple frames ago here, there it is. If you buy this, this is the RX400H, and you just get the front-wheel drive version, it's rated like 335 horsepower between the electric and the gas engine. It'll get up and go. I mean, it's a sport utility, I thought. And then you say, well, gee, I want the all-wheel drive version. They put another electric motor in the back just to drive the rear wheels. So it adds even more horsepower to it. 